everyone. Welcome to Make Moments Matter, a music education podcast, where I share lesson ideas, songs, games, and inspiring things for your elementary music classroom. My name is David Rao, and I am the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. This episode of the podcast is a replay containing the audio version of a Musical Mondays live video. If you're not familiar with Musical Mondays, every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, I go live on Facebook and Instagram to share about the lessons that I'm using in class with my students. I give a recap of my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons and then do a deep dive about one grade level and share the books, instruments, songs, and process that I use to teach the lesson to kids. This podcast episode contains all the audio from the Musical Mondays video, but if you'd like to see a replay of the video itself, you can find a link to the archived video on YouTube when you click the link in the notes for this episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Here's the show. Hey everyone, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Instagram, on Pinterest, on Patreon, on Facebook, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Tonight, I'm I'm going to be talking about um, a new book, well, a couple new books that I um, am using for Native American Heritage Month, which is the month of November. So I'm going to share some of those books, how I use them, and some things that you might uh, think about if you're you're using that. Um, That's going to be in just a second. Um, If you um have any questions about any of these things the resources stuff that i talk about in these videos i have a whole page on my blog dedicated to those links um so you can just find those things directly you can click on the link at the bottom wherever you're watching listening to this and find that stuff um that's on the links page or go to my blog makemomentsmatter.org and do it old school by clicking the video tab and then finding um the release for this year um okay if you're going to be at aosa in a couple weeks i hope you will join me for a co- uh, my session um, it's Thursday morning and there's a repeat. So if you're in going to AOSA National Conference, I hope I'll see you there. Come say hi um, and come to my session. It's going to be a super fun time. Um, other than that, I, uh, I'm not doing workshops again in person for quite a while because it's just like things slow down in November, December because we're all doing so much. But if you're like, but I need the credit or I need to do whatever. I want to level up on my uh, whatever through my district you know, PD, whatever you want more PD. Um, I have a brand new Patreon page where I'm put, posting a lot of content. Um, and I'd be happy to, if you're a Patreon member, uh, do any of the certificates of completion or whatever you might need. So just let me know if you're interested in any of that stuff, but check that out. I'll link that on my links page. Ooh. Okay. Before I get into books, you might've noticed my cool new shirt or my sweatshirt. Oh, Hey, it says tis the season and has like the holiday lights and stuff. Okay. So it doesn't say which season. So it could be any season. Um, so if you're like, you're skipping Thanksgiving to go straight to Christmas, maybe I am, but <laughs> that's my business. No, but <laughs> this is so warm and it's so cold out and, uh, makes me very happy. And anyway, um, oh, okay. Also I'm going from candy corn and I'm switching directly to, <laughs> this is so ridiculous. I'm switching directly to, oh, candy canes. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. I don't like really love candy canes. Um, except that I, I like, I don't like them on their own, but I, I like them in like, have you ever had those candy cane Hershey kisses? Oh, those are so good. Or like in that, like uh, peppermint bark. Oh my gosh. Like the, cr- like crunched up candy cane in stuff. I am, I am here for that. But, um, candy cane on its own. Mm, uh, it's never been a fan, but anyway, I have this cool, cute little cozy and this co- cozy, uh, sweatshirt in, uh, all for musically minted. Uh, if you're interested, you should go buy their stuff now, not just so like you have it in time for the season, but like they have a, they did a very limited run because they're doing all this stuff at AOSA, the national conference. So they only have so much stuff and they're going to ship it all out before AOSA. So like you need to, if you're going to get it, you should get it now. Anyway, I I have a link to that on my links page. Oh my gosh, you can get a discount if you put in, um, make moments matter at checkout. Oh, Anyway, but like, check out this cute sweatshirt. It's so cute. Anyway, there's uh, more to come, but um, I just thought I'd mention that before um, I get into anything else. Okay, so let's talk about books. I have a, a ton of books that I love to use on a regular basis for uh, for substitute teachers, for um, regular lessons in class, for informing a story, for, um, uh, you know, we're going to add a musical song. We're going to add whatever. Like, there are so many things you can do with books. I use them all the time. I have so many books at school. Um, but I'm always looking, especially for books with um, 
protagonists from uh, marginalized communities or from that don't have as much representation in my story or in my classroom already or um, I'm just trying to highlight different cultures and peoples through storytelling. I think that it is so um, easy to uh, like step into a culture or, or explore a culture or feel like a part of a community, feel a connection with people once you've read a story about them or a story from their perspective. I think that like, that's why I love reading is like, I feel like once I've read something, I feel like I, I understand this connection so much better. Um, with all different kinds of people. So I think books in the classroom are just so valuable and we need to use them more. Also, uh, you know, how many principals and whatever are like literacy, literacy, literacy. Uh, well, guess what? We can read in our classroom and that does a lot for kids. So um, anyway, I want to share a couple of books that I'm using for Native American Heritage Month, which is November. I, I have so many more, but these are just a few. Um, I'm going to show you a bunch and then I'm going to talk specifically about one. Um, so these are all books that are basically about like dance or movement or um, songs specifically, but I think that there are so many other books that you can use and just use the story or use the idea or use whatever. But these are specifically about dance because the, the book I want to highlight today is all about dance. Um, so Pow Wow Day, um, I love this book. I shared this one last year. It's by Tracy Sorrell, illustrated by Madeline Goodnight. Um, it's this beautiful story about this kid who wants to be a part of the powwow and um, is is not feeling well. And um, it just like takes you through her story and explores what the powwow is like for her, um, what she sees, what she experiences, what that means to her. Um, beautiful, beautiful illustrations and just a really cool story. I shared about this one last year if you want to go back and hear uh, more about that one. Um, I can, well, check last year's videos. Um, Here's another one that I've shared before, which I absolutely love, um, called Let's Hoop Dance by Violet Duncan. I shared about this one, um, and actually I wrote a blog post where I shared um, how I use this and what I do with this one. Um, but it's a really cool story about a young boy and his dad and how his dad is teaching him how to do the hoop dance and what that means to them, all the inspiration they find, all the shapes and cool things they make with the hoops. Um, and for me, this is a, a story where like we read this and then we take this as inspiration, like take a bunch of mallets. What else could these mallets be? They're not mallets. They're yada, yada. They're, they're uh, you know, lollipops. They're uh, balloons. They're whatever. And we move with them. We play with them. We try with them. We explore with them using this book as an example. We don't pull out hula hoops to do the, to try and mimic the exact things they do. We take inspiration from it and talk about like, how are they finding connections between what this looks like with hoops and what that eagle looks like. Like, how are they finding that connection? And we explore what that looks like. Violet Duncan, this is a great book. Um, another one that she wrote is uh, When We Dance. Um, and this is just another cool book that explains like why dance is so important to um, not all Native American tribes, but specifically her situation gives um, a specific story um, uh, about um you know, one specific family. So it's, it's a really cool story, but it helps you feel and understand this connection to um, Native American tribes and what dance means to them, why it's important. Um, and these are with actual like pictures of her and her family that have been sort of um, kind of photoshopped or, or filtered a little bit so that you have um, uh, sort of looks kind of like an illustration, but it's just uh, pictures. So it's a really cool story. This is a brand new one to me called We Belong to the Drum. Um, and this is a, um, a really cool story about how a baby in the womb is like hearing these sounds and then, um, growing up, experiencing all these things through the powwow or through, uh, cultural moments, um, all the things that this baby's experiencing, how the drum is so important to them. Why is it so important? Um, and it, and it gives this great, um, connection. And then, uh, when the kid is in daycare, um, how they bring the powwow CD and bring drums and they like let other people experience that and feel that connection that they have. So it's, it's this idea of like um, taking that culture, taking um, how important a drum is and um, showing other people. Um, and so it's, it's really cool because you can, your kids can be the, uh, the class as they experience this and feel the story of um, this kid and why the drum is so important. And then one more, which I know I've shared about before is this one called Jingle Dancer. Um, this one is by Cynthia Latick Smith. Um, and this is one about a little girl who wants to be a jingle dancer, but needs to get 
the like the jingles, like the 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 little um, cone shells. I can't remember what they're called. Um, what they call them? What they call them? Let's see. Um, ah, they just call them jingles. Okay, why didn't I think that? But they they look kind of like uh, cones, I guess. Um, but anyway, and how she gets some from like each person in her life who means something to her. It's just really cool. Sort about how she makes her own um dress sing by borrowing these jingles and getting these so it's this like cool connection to like um you making music and you're connected to all the people that came before you and all those people who helped make um you a musician and helped make um make your story possible so it's a really cool story jingle dancer um and these are just some of the stories about dance that i think are really cool that um you could absolutely incorporate talk with kids, help them make connections. Uh, but the one I want to talk about today is this one called Finding My Dance. Um, it's by Rhea Thundercloud. I'm just going to read just like a little bit of it and then um, talk through some connections and things you might consider doing with this book. My name is Wakaja Haja, Wakaja Haja Piwiga, which means beautiful thunder woman. And this is something where you can hear the author actually read their name. I have listened to it probably 10 times. And every time I then like look at it, it I forget. So I just either need to like not look and just like write what I or think what I remember or write it out phonetically or something. Cause um, you know, it's like if you're learning a language or hearing a language and you like, you can get the sound, but then you look at it and it like sort of throws you off because you're pulling back the context of what you're already hearing. Anyway, I just need to like either cross this out and just like remember or like, but in phonetic or something, because it throws me off every time. Um, I am from the Ho-Chunk Nation in Wisconsin and Sandia Pueblo, New Mexico. These tribes have different languages, cultures, and ceremonies, but both value an important part of my life, dance. When I was four years old, I came home from school and there was a beautiful orange jingle dress, hand sewn by my mom, hanging on the door frame. The dress had silver cones that clinked together and made the most beautiful sound when they moved, like rainfall. There are many stories about the jingle dress that have been passed down from generation to generation. My mom explained that it was a healing dress, and every time I danced in it, I'd send blessings to everyone watching. In receiving the jingle dress, I was preparing to be brought into the powwow circle. A powwow is when we gather to honor our culture through song and dance. Dancers, tribal members, and spectators come together to celebrate at the dance arena. The, the arena is a circle to symbolize unity, where there is no beginning and no end, just infinite connections to the spirit world and the earth. Drummers line up along the edge and center of the arena, and their drum beat represents the heartbeat, the source that gives the dancers energy. I was nervous when we arrived at the first powwow, where I would dance alone, even though my family would be following behind me. The powwow was packed, but right before the first drum beat sounded, my youngest brother walked over and whispered in my ear, dance hard. That invigorated my spirit. I danced and danced feeling full of life. Dancers and spectators shook hands with my family, greeting me and welcoming me into the circle. Okay, so it continues on um, all the thing about how the love for the dance grew and how they would dance all over um, Indian country, traveling from one state to the next every weekend. Um, and then, uh, at 13, I started dancing the fancy shawl, which is a style that mimics a butterfly fast and athletic fancy shawlers fly and twirl around the arena, gracefully keeping time with the drum beat. And this is a cool transition too. I was learning that dance isn't just one thing. It is fluid and evolves just as a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. I discovered contemporary dance, then tap, jazz, ballet, and modern. I couldn't get enough. I wanted to try it all. I could feel myself transforming into the dancer I was meant to be. And then, so like here where it shows like the, the fancy shawl dance and that like poses that she might do there, then it's just modern jazz, ballet, contemporary and tap um, of her in those poses too, which I think is a, a cool juxtaposition against the fancy shawl dance on the other page. I knew dance was where my heart belonged. So I auditioned for a competitive dance team. Not only did I make the team, I got a solo. We competed against other dance studios at Nationals in Las Vegas, Nevada. My dance team made it to the top three and I was awarded the title International Dance Challenge Champion. I had won with my very first solo. But not every moment in my dance journey felt like a celebration. Sometimes I felt like an outsider. 
Classical dance is rigid and structured, while traditional dance is more grounded and expressive. I pushed myself to be perfect. The classical style was the opposite of what I was used to, and it wasn't always easy. So it goes into um, her um, life um, as a dancer, as a professional classical dancer. Um, and then I love where it says, throughout my travels, I was often greeted with beautiful dark clouds or kisses from the rain on my skin. I knew that I was never alone and that my ancestors were watching over me. No matter how far I went, I would always return to my homelands, to the sound of the drums. So uh, then it talks in about how she was gifted a, a set of eagle wings um, and uh, the kind of dances she would do with that and the connection to the elements and feeling connected to her, to her culture and um, the dance that she grew up learning. And then um, she talks about, I transform again when I was gifted a daughter. So this like cool idea about like metamorphosis and changing over time and how different experiences change you. And at the end, I danced lifetimes before this one and I will dance lifetimes after it. I'm never alone. I have danced alongside my ancestors and will continue to do so for the rest of this cyclical existence. I am beautiful thunder woman and dance will always be a part of me. So I love this idea, like connecting, um, like she calls it classical, like Western dance forms like ballet and jazz and, and tap, um, along with the traditional dances and like what that, um, what, what those connections are, how you can find the connections, but also see some differences too, and how she sort of um, crosses between the two different mediums and the two different things. And I, I just think it's really cool. But I also feel like this is a book that is written in a way that is absolutely accessible for young kids and helps them sort of see themselves in this story and like find connections and make cool connections. And also I think it really, um, it takes seriously like the powwow experience and, and um, all the dance forms there and how important that is. But and you see that through her eyes. And so I just think it's like such a cool story um, and something that my students would really resonate with. So then I went looking online and I found a couple cool resources in like 30 seconds that I was like, this is cool. There's a book where the author herself reads the book. It's like a read along. So like if I have this book and I want to hear someone else read it, like it, it highlights the words as you go, which they are absolutely used to. Kids do this all the time. Um, and so this is a resource where you could read it in class and then send that link to their homeroom teacher so they could read it again in their own. You could have that be like the reading experience where the author reads it. That's the first time you could read it or the author could read it. Um, that's a cool thing. And then also I found um, uh, several videos of the author dancing, but then the one I posted on the links pages of her doing the Eagle dance, which is what she talks about at the end of the book. But there, there are so many, like if you just start looking, if you have one of these books and you think like, okay, I don't, I don't want to say like, okay, now we're all going to do this dance, but I want kids to see that dance. I want them to see what it looks like an authentic representation. I want them to see, um, you know, a, a primary source. I want to explore that. There are so many videos out there of, um, of folks doing actual dances in the right context, in context, in a way that they are comfortable sharing. So this book is like a great start. It's tangible. Kids can feel it, can see it, can explore it. And then you can show them some of the videos of her actually dancing. Um, the Eagle dance video I showed you, it, it has elements. Um, let me see if I can find uh, the music she dances to is, it's called The Dance by Robert Mirabel. Um, and it's like a cool song because it like has elements of like traditional what you would expect for like traditional native american music but then also like very very contemporary so um it's cool that like you can see her doing these traditional dances with like more contemporary music and it sort of just is like a uh, like a microcosm of like her life of like blending her traditional culture with like classical like she said classical western culture um and so it's just like a really really cool representation so this book if you get it and you try it just like or, or any book, uh, you know, about um, Native American cultures that you're going to find or indigenous cultures if you're in Canada and you're not Native American, but First Nations there. Um, you can find books that are really great books and, and fun touchstone resources. And then you can find amazing videos. You can find interviews. You can find authors reading. That, all that stuff is out there. So if you're like, I really want to get more books. I want to do more with 
Native American Heritage Month, but I don't know where to start. I would say the first thing is to buy the book. And then once you bought the book, do like a little bit of like, okay, what else can I do? Can I show a video? Can I get an explanation? Can I whatever? It's probably out there. You just need to get the book and then um, do a little Google search. So I did some of that for you though on the links page. Um, I have a link to this book in case you're interested. You can still get it um, and use it this month. Uh, I know it's on Prime. I mean, you, you can get... Um, you can get the book, and then um, I link together just a couple of videos, but there are um, a ton more out there. Um, a, another one like I shared earlier, this book, Let's Hoop Dance by Violet Duncan. I love showing this to my kids. I love reading this to my kids, exploring it with my kids. And guess what? I did a quick little Google search, and I found Tony Duncan, who's the dad in the story, a video of him doing um, a dance at a, a hoop dance competition. You can find all this stuff. It's out there, um, but you just got to start somewhere. And I would say that place where you start is get the book and then read it, explore it, try it, think like, okay, what can I do to show my kids that can get them an example of this culture that can um, give them an authentic view of this. Um, and that all come, but I would say first you got to get the book. So um, I put a link on my link, the links page of, of, all, of all sorts of books. Um, you can look at the ones that I feature tonight, or you can just look through that list. The thing I will tell you is that on that list, it says, uh, I think the list is like Native American uh, representation in books or Native American heritage books. Oh, just, it's, no, it's not even that. It's just, mar I'm glad I did this correctly. I, it's just marked as indigenous peoples because some of the books are Native American, but some of them are First Nations of Canada and some are indigenous people from other parts of the world. So, um, I think if you're celebrating Native American Heritage Month, you probably want to try and focus on just Native American stories. But, I mean, indigenous cultures um, have similarities throughout the world, so you can find cool books and you can make connections um, with all sorts of things. But just know that if you go to that page that I linked, it's just in indigenous peoples, not necessarily just Native American. So... Um, if you want to just focus on Native American this month, or if you just want to look and see what you can find, um, that's great. But just know that on that page are some books that are maybe about, you know, a First Nations tribe from Canada and not necessarily just the U.S. Okay, that's my little <clears throat> my little disclaimer. But um, go check it out. See what books you can find. See if there's anything that um, really interests you. Keep looking. If there are books that you love that are not on that list, please send me an email or send me a message and I will keep adding to that list. Um, because I always want to find more books and more resources that I can share with my kids, but also to share with all of y'all at the same time. Okay, I hope this gives you um, uh, an idea of what you can do, a way to get started. Um, I'm, this is a book that I've been looking at for a long time, and I just never bought. So I'm so glad that I bought Finding My Dance by Rhea Thundercloud. Um, it's a, it, the illustrations are beautiful. The story is really cool. It's super accessible for my kids. Um, I hope you check it out too, and see if you might use it in your own classroom. All right, I will see y'all next week for another Musical Mondays video. Thanks for coming along tonight, everyone. Have a good night.